Four maroon and white game from Kyle Field. This is the Texas A&M Aggies first one under the direction of their new head coach, Mike Elko. And up in the broadcast booth, we're glad you've joined us. I'm Will. have been added through the portal and guys trying to earn a role and it's going to come down to who can execute today and do assignment and alignment sound and build trust with this coaching staff. We get an Ethan Mikulski kickoff into the hands of Le'Veon Moss. Two quarterbacks for the Maroon team and Le'Veon Moss back there in the backfield with him. Moss will get the first carry of the game and he has run out of bounds after a solid gain near to Connor Wigman and Max Johnson last year. And the left-hander will get rid of this one to Theo Mellon Orstrom, the tight end. And he's got it out to the 40-yard line and a first down for the Maroon team. With Trey Zoon drafting this Maroon team, a lot of the starting offensive line from last year up there with Trey Zoon and Le'Veon Moss. Brutschman, All-American, he was on the SEC's all-freshman team. Little pressure on Henderson. Shamar Stewart is in there. Can the Maroon team move the chains? Henderson's got a roll left, and the left-hander has pressure again. He is brought down. And that's it's a cover sack there, Dave. <laughs> From Wisconsin, Rodas Johnson, who played 37 games in his career with the Badgers. So punt it away. Punt was fielded by Ruben Owens. Take the handoff, and they're going downfield right away. Pass is complete. That's over the middle. That's to Cyrus Allen, the speedy Louisiana Tech transfer. Maker. Yeah, it's just a little skinny post, and he dropped it right in perfectly, and this is a sweep left. Owens has room, and he tight ropes the sideline. Wigman's center is T.J. Shanahan. Looking downfield, rolling right. Smart Looked like play. good coverage there, so he just got rid of it at the feet. Oh. Waiting on the shotgun snap from T.J. Shanahan. The guards for the white team right now, Armaj Reed Adams and Colton Thomason. Swing it out to the right side. Ooh. Pursuit there and brought down at the 25-yard line. Trying to keep a good first drive alive. Oh. That's batted down. Ethan Mikulski tries the 42-yard field goal from the right hash. Does he put the white team on the board? He did. Yes, he does. 3-0. The white team leads 9-40. Sell Reed as the quarterback. He's got pressure immediately, but he's going to let one go up oh. top. Trying to come back to it was... Jade Walker, he couldn't come up with it. But there's a flag down on the play. I don't know if they're going to call interference. Moment, Marcel Reed, the quarterback, he entered the Texas Bowl against Oklahoma State right away last year after an immediate injury to Jalen Henderson. He threw for 361 yards in that game. This is a give to Le'Veon Moss, and the game is Texas Bowl. He can really run. Yeah, not just the 361 passing. He did have a rushing TD in that game, trying to find some room and getting another minimal game. That is E.J. Smith, the stand. Reed wants to throw, now he takes off and runs, but he won't get there. It's a good job there by the defense. We talked about trying to keep him bottled up in the pocket. Scooby Williams credited with that last tackle. Williams, a Florida transfer. His time in Gainesville, he had 53 tackles. That was last year. Four of them for lost yardage. Williams, a junior transfer, played with the Gators last year. And Daniels will get the nod here, but immediately brought down in the backfield. And that's by Nick Scorton, the Purdue transfer. Led the Big Ten in sack. He was the captain. His first pick was Nick Scorton. And Mike Elpico believes that uh, that's because Trey Zoon didn't want to block Nick Scorton. <laughs> <laughs> Good reason. Yeah. <laughs> Hard hit. That broke up the pass. Oh. 
Tried to thread the needle, tried to get it to Wesley Watson. Plant this together, but you're right in the spring game <laughs> when they've just got a few practices under their belt. You're right, it's hard. Punt it away. First picks of the draft, and they certainly were. Jalen Henderson back to work, and he wants to go up top. Deep ball, incomplete. Bryce Anderson in coverage there. So was Javon. Ooh. Brought down immediately, Le'Veon Moss. And that is linebacker these days if you're not fast. Edger and Cooper waiting on the draft on Thursday. Potential first rounder. Pressure. Trying to run is Henderson. That will pick up the yardage after he had to pull the ball down and run with it. Punt will bounce. They're going to have to get everybody out of the way, and it's downed at the 32-yard line. How many hamstrings do you think they're going to pull in that well, game, Dave? A, a, a win in that game is just no injuries. They might as well not even keep score. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ripped down immediately. Cyrus Allen, the intended receiver, but B.J. Mays right. Handed off Amari Daniel. He's got a little bit of room. Dalton Brooks will bring him down. <laughs> See what happens on third and five. Can the white team extend this drive? Wigman pump fakes. And now he has it to Cyrus Allen. Back to receive it, Moose Muhammad. Hey, you never want a quarterback that's happy to punt. That's not a good sign. <laughs> they all should want to stay on the field, right? <laughs> Moose Muhammad, the fair catch at his own 15-yard line. So still over the right tackle. And Trey Zoon, the captain, is the left tackle. New offensive line coach here in College Station is Adam Cushing, who came with Mike Elko from Duke and Le'Veon Moss. Marcel Reed, another give to Moss. Does he get the first down? Looks like he just got to the sticks, very close. It'll depend on where the knee went down, and they are moving the chains. A little different here. I think the theme so far in this game has been. Marcel Reed. Hand it to Smith. Solid gain, just like Dad back in the past. <laughs> yeah. Sweep left. They are former players of this program at A&M. They both played with Steven. Two great ones there. We're lucky to have them for sure. Tony Jarrett Eddy has been here. He was on staff with Jimbo Fisher. Hopefully get a yard here. Hand it off to Smith. Oh, Shamar not. Stewart is <laughs> in the backfield. <laughs> Rodis Johnson joined Stewart, and so did DJ Hicks. A Scorton will be first round picks this year. And he's seen Scorton plenty. Going to run it. Reed, fourth and one. He'll get the first down as he gets it out close to midfield before Bryce Anderson brought him down. Yard line. Nebu, the snap to Reed and the hand to Moss, and he's up the middle, and he's into white territory, and he takes it all the way down to the 28. Ball is loose. Was Le'Veon Moss down or not? Alan Klein, the offensive coordinator for the Aggies, hand it off, trying to get out to the right side, trying to turn it up. Noah Thomas on. Fake the handoff to Anthony Denota and Jade Walker makes the catch right around the 15 yard line. Kansas State, Will Lee does too in the secondary. Marcel Reed got loose inside the 10 and he got the first down at the six yard line. I think that play there highlights how these young quarterbacks. Le'Veon Moss. It's tough when you get down around the goal line and guys like Shamar Stewart are there waiting on you <laughs> in closed space, and Stewart can close it even more. It's a great opportunity to show that here. 
Stewart gets up and checks out okay, and Le'Veon Moss checks into the end zone and gives the Maroon team a 6-3 lead with the extra point pending. And that was on the heels. On to attempt the extra point. Bond tried more field goals than anybody in the country last year. Into the end zone for the touchdown. But as you said, that offensive line did a great job. <laughs> That's when you'd like to be a running. New quarterback for the white team, but it's an immediate handoff up the middle. Back here for the Aggies in this 2024 maroon and white game. Boast wants to throw. He has pressure. Got away from it for a moment and then was brought down by Jesse Chukwu, sophomore from Cy Fall. Boast has the snap, a couple of lefties in this game at quarterback. Boast will take off and run. He got right around the 45 yard line and then the tackle credited to Isaiah Willis. It's so Mike important Elko on effect. defense, yep. well offense too, but. Samuel Thornton is the center right now. Handoff to Benjamin up the middle. He's brought down in the backfield. There's a catch. Close to the first down sticks. Micah Tease on the reception. It's a good throw there. Quickly and be decisive is a, always a test that these coordinators are looking to, to evaluate. That is tight in right out of the backfield, but it goes. Benjamin briefly ran into his own man and then got it exactly to midfield, possibly just shy of it. <laughs> Three receivers go right on third down and six, and that's almost an interception. Bobby Taylor. That's a dicey situation. Oh, good kick. Punt it away, and Moose Muhammad's going to let it land. Oh, Standing oh, on the goal line. See where line your feet and, oh, are. Bryce Anderson's pretty upset. <laughs> Come on, Bryce. Uh, he sent the ball up high. <laughs> I think he forgot for a moment where he was. He's yeah. still on the goal line. To going Ooh. under center and having trouble with the snap. Ooh. Everything today has been run from the shotgun, this time under center. And a botched snap. Uh, he'll pick up a yard on that one. Uh, more Go Texas. And he'll swing out to the left side, and Henderson wants to throw the other way. Pass complete, but brought down rather quickly. It was. Over the middle, but immediately met. Yeah. Catch was made by Johnny Ryder. But big put it away. Down. Yeah, big third down stop for that. Roster almost 19 yards per catch in two seasons at Louisiana Tech. And he'll call for the fair catch and make it right around the 31 yard line. So the white team moments away from Dave and Stevens' conversation with Texas A&M Director of Athletics Trev Alberts. He joins us here in the booth. Connor Wigman wants to go up top. He's looking for Micah Tease, and that will fall incomplete. Uh, double coverage on that uh, right side. This back in is, is won, the, won the first half. Yeah, very low scoring. Good defense once again. They tried to sweep to the people. Um, just a lot of wonderful people associated with this place. A lot of great coaches in our department, great folks working in the athletic department. So a real blessing and an honor to be, get to be a part of the team. And I know you're going to be working closely with uh, Mike Elko, talk offensive coordinator here, but uh, everything that I sort of thought in watching, you know, video after video, he's a first class individual, not only a great football coach. Uh, you're echoing exactly my thoughts about Elko. Of course, I knew him as the D.C. here. And yeah. 
we used to, to go through the fire to find himself here now. Pretty remarkable trajectory and journey for him. Well, and I'm quite sure that the only reason that they, he wasn't considered for the, the head coaching job before is that he had no experience as a head coach, and he proved himself at Duke. As a go, don't make broad judgments about your team based on what you see at the spring game when you're playing against each other, because you can think you have a great defense and find out that maybe the offense isn't as good as you'd hoped, right? <laughs> uh, but this is a defensive mind, and I've been to several practices. American and a Buckus Award winner over here. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on uh, NIL and, and how that has changed so much in just the last five years and then coming to A&M and getting that program evolving. What have you seen there, and how, how have you already started to make changes? Well, it's obviously critically important, you know. I mean, infrastructure that's really good in place here right now. A lot of it's just, you know, communication. It's like, hey, what... That's a great pass. What are we currently doing, and what can we do for the long term? And so that's what we'll really be trying to do administratively. Um, we're here to support about 600 student athletes and our coaches. That's our job, and uh, we're going to work really hard at it. Marcel Reed with another completion and a good drive here by the young signal caller. A little two-minute drill, always good for the quarterbacks. See how they react. Uh, conference looks like, because at the end of the day, for us to continue to get that type of revenue from television it has to be the types of games the type of brands that rate i mean they run a business too <laughs> exactly and so i think a lot of it's going to be you know i don't think you're going to have 70 teams i think there's going to be more contraction and there are going to be fewer and fewer teams that are <laughs> <laughs> that probably cost me a couple years of my life uh, well the maroons uh, making a drive now they're oh they're just short of the first down it looks like let's see what they're going to do here on third down in less than, well, about a yard. Uh, they're on the uh, five-yard line. The one thing we can all agree that Texas has really good that Nebraska probably doesn't is Tex-Mex. Have you oh. been able to enjoy that? <laughs> Important stuff now, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I will say uh, uh, we uh, we are staying at a, one of the casitas over at Traditions, and uh, when we went in there, they had a little, what is this new model in college athletics that potentially could emerge, and do what, what effort do we make to try to affect it? Touchdown there by Noah Thomas. It's good to see. A nice pick play there, man-to-man -man coverage. Yeah. You see Colin Klein working his magic, getting the guy, using the scheme to go. And uh, I love the hire of Colin Klein, though. That, that was a fantastic hire, uh, getting a young man to leave his alma mater at Kansas State, come down here and, and be our offensive coordinator is, is, is really awesome. He really knows what he's doing. You, you've just brought up something. I mean, you left your alma mater to come yeah. here. What's your explanation for that? Why did you do that? What reasons? Uh, I mean, I know I'm an Aggie, so I know how great this university is, but uh, I'd like to know what uh, what your thoughts are and why you took this job. You know, Colin. We've seen enough breaks with Connor, I'll tell you what. <laughs> now there's pressure, and he will go down. Welcome back, Will. Yeah. You guys might it? have to take it for a little while. I'm a You're little busy. out of breath. Yeah. Well, you, you of breath. Love those mountains anymore? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I struggle enough getting around a golf course. <laughs> so a punt away here in the third quarter. And that's another Moose Muhammad fair catch. Leading 14 to 3. Le'Veon Moss in the backfield. Jalen Henderson wants the throw. He's got the pass complete. That's first down yardage for Noah Thomas. There's some penetration in the backfield and stringing this one out very well. The white defense. Question about that, it's great to have Mike here. Led the Big Ten in sacks, did Scorton last year. Now up top, deep ball, trying to look over his shoulder and incomplete. Pressure coming, but he evades it. He's going deep. Got his man inside the 10. Did Noah Thomas hang on? Big play down inside the 10. Noah Thomas. And a big time completion. Trying to punch it in. Le'Veon Moss inside. Max, though, is their ability to not just be a runner, but catch the ball out of the backfield, which as you guys know, 
is a lot of plays the biggest mismatch is a running back on a linebacker in the pass game. No question about it. You've got to be able to throw to the... Like it is here. Uh, you got no deep threat, so they, you're right. They can squat and... Oh, wow. Did he catch that? Noah Thomas. Terrific catch with a flag down. If it stands, it extends the Maroon team lead. Well, that drive was just about all him through the air. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great throw, Dave. He had a free free rusher in his face, and uh, that is not easy, especially with this defensive line, and put it out front, and, and really a, a phenomenal catch, fully extended there by Noah Thomas. Well, that rain is coming down hard now. Yeah, this is, this is turning into a monster in the rain, so it, this is good practice, I suppose. Wigman wants to throw in the rain. Tried to go over the middle to Jaden Platt. A little late act. Incomplete as he tried to get it out to Reuben Owens. Yeah, that wasn't going to go anywhere. Moose Muhammad back yet again to retrieve another punt. AM said goodbye to their punter a year ago, Nick Constantino. And not only a, a great talent, but just a, a good human being, a good leader. So the ball is back in the hands of Le'Veon Moss. Ain't it. it? was just shy of the first down stick, so second and one. And Denota getting up the middle to get the first down and crossing into white team territory. Shotgun formation for Reed. Bobbled by Noah Thomas, but he slipped a tackle. He'll get yardage out of this. Did you? Moon team on another march. Met at the 37 yard line. The guys in the box, you flip it out on the perimeter. Reed downfield, too high for his intended receiver. Looked like he wanted Moose Muhammad over the middle. A little too much zip, incomplete pass. So as a quarterback. The safety creeping down to the weak side. Now that's a pass key. Yep, so there's your RPU. It's a perfect example. So the slant now is replacing that safety coming down in the box because he's unaccounted for right there. I got a flag down, but we're back to do a lot of things in the line of scrimmage. Oh, what happened to the snap? Oh, that's a botched play from the start. I think the white team just recovered. They got a turnover. Complicated <laughs> safety keys. <laughs> yeah, look, it, it, that ball never did get yeah, off the Mark ground. Mark Nabu, he slid it, and it just came out of his hand. The, yeah. the rain has dissipated, but the, the wet turf will be consistent from here on out. Wet turf and wet football. As great of a job as uh, well, the broadcast. <laughs> So the white team takes over after the turnover. They're possibly affecting all of them, but 12th man productions. Control rooms are full in that south end zone of Kyle Field with three events all going on at the same time, but bringing you this one I ask for here at Kyle Field. Fighting Irish of Notre Dame will be coming to Kyle Field mm -hmm. on the 31st. We were talking before we came on the air. It's possible my conference play September 14th at Florida. Big games at home. You always like that. Your bigger games at home this season. Pressure. He got, of course, it was a, a huge rivalry back when I was here 100 years ago. Boomed over the head of Moose Muhammad there. Certainly no easy games in the SEC, but if you look. Play. The expected front has come in early. Wet turf down there on Kyle Field. Trying to get around the edge and up to the 40-yard line. That's Johnny Ryder. There that you want to get. We have the ability to go get them with the facilities and the NIL. Henderson yeah, swings it out. First down yardage, 40-yard line, and out of bounds. Yeah, it's great that the Aggies can compete in that marketplace. Even team. Henderson going up top, but nobody is up top. Uh, that was uh, 
miscommunication because there was nobody within 10 yards of where that ball landed. The key to any good football team is it all starts up front. You can't win football games, especially in the West, without a good offensive line. And I think you have to feel a little bit better, but still some question marks there until you're actually in live action as to how good they really are. Jalen Henderson got that last pass to Johnny Ryder. Hands this off to Ronnie Crosby, a freshman from DeRitter, Louisiana. Receiver's going to be. Henderson wants to throw to the end zone, looking for Bunton. I don't think he kept his, I think he caught it out of the end zone. He was impossible to defend. <laughs> <laughs> Well, even if Bunton had come down in bounds with that, there was a penalty, so it moves it back. But here's a tough run by Preston Landis, the University of North Texas transfer. By the way, you're running routes. You have to know the full route tree. And, well, you have to be able to catch. And, and, that, and catch, and yeah. Good hands. I mean, all those things. So, yeah, that, they're, they're complete football players. A lot of really good things about him. There's certainly going to be some competition in that room. Yeah, Didn't get much as Henderson took off to run. Had good coverage in the secondary. Worst nightmare, and when you can trust a quarterback not to take a sack, it's always a, a big step in the right direction. That looked like it was right down the middle with plenty to spare, that 40-yard field goal attempt. So, Randy Bond is good. Field to work with. And, oh, yeah, you're going against SEC defenses down there. Yep, it forces offenses to be incredibly efficient and execute and win the one-on-ones. That was a low step to Connor Wigman. And they got quick pressure. And Down here in Bryan, Texas, then I, went to Purdue. How do we let him get away? <laughs> He's coming again. <laughs> he got around a tackle there and was coming again for Connor Wigman. Got the pass off, got it complete, and getting out of bounds. Is here comes the pressure. It's Jared Kerr creeping up from the safety spot, but they pick him up. And that is incomplete over the middle, but a flag drops. Well, I'm wondering what they're going to call here. That didn't look like it. Yeah, that was a really good job by him. Up Ooh. the middle in a big hole, Reuben Owens. He's gone. Reuben Owens. Three touchdowns last year. More this year. And one more <laughs> here in the maroon and white game. Busts free, long gainer. He is to the house. Makes him so dangerous is when he is in the open field, he's dynamic. Drake Batia for the extra point. And he drove it home. Might be a tad too late, but the white team gets closer. Well, if, they, if they're going to have any chance at all, they're going to have to shut down this uh, maroon offense and relatively quickly with only four minutes left in the game. And it appears this fourth quarter is a running clock. Denota is stacked up by Shamar Stewart. Stewart's been active today. He'll be active all season long. A great job on the back end. Well, we really need that because we lost so much. Jaden Hill, the Florida transfer, was coming on a blitz from the secondary, but Reed got away. And he'll pick. Reed in the shotgun. He sends Noah Thomas in motion and hands it to Denota. Stacked Ooh. up right there in the middle. And that's another tackle from Scooby Williams. Boy, For the was, white team, and Williams he was and Stewart, they have been so active. I figure that's one of the reasons that we we were able to get him here is because of Jay Bateman. Donota's got a gainer. All the way down to the 40-yard line in white territory. It will be rocking. When you talk to these A&M players, they all tell you the same thing. They can't wait for Kyle Field to be rocking, and then they all say, hopefully at night. This is yeah, when yeah. everybody wants <laughs> yeah. that. Everybody's hoping for yeah. at night, yeah. yep. If not, we're staring down the barrel of 115 degrees. But uh, <laughs> a lot of excitement around Mike Elko and the direction he has this program trending. All right, fellas, that will wrap us up from Kyle Field today. The Maroon team will win this one. 24 to 10 over the white team. Guys, just some impressions before we get off the air here. A lot of good defense. Uh, slim pickings for the offenses, which excited about what they have to offer. Well, yeah. 
It's as it should be. The defense was pretty dominant. It's as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm glad to see. I'm glad to see that they had good competition. That uh, no, and, uh, 